Chinese Caesar and rejoice in his triumph. You blocks, you stones, you worse than senseless things. Many times off have you climbed walls and battlements, the towers and windows to see great Pompeii past the streets of Rome. And do you now, strew flowers in his way that come to travel or Pompeii's blood? Be gone! Go, go, good countrymen! It is in no matter. Let no images be hung by Caesar's trophy. Who else would soar above the view of men and keep us all in servile fearfulness? The biggest, most elaborate festival in years, all due to the generosity of the triumphant Julius Caesar, who has donated a small fortune for this year's entertainment. My lord. Forget not in your speed, Antonius, to touch Calpurnia. For our elders say, the baron touched in this holy chase. Shake off their sterile curse. Ooh. Ooh. I shall remember when Caesar says to this, it is performed. Yeah. Caesar. Ha! Ah, who calls? There we go, is they still? Peace yet again! Who is it in the press that calls on me? I hear a tongue. Show that all the music cries, Caesar! Speak! Caesar is turned to hear. Beware the Ides of March. What man is that? A soothsayer bids you beware the Ides of March. Set him up for me. Let me see his face. Hello, come from the throng. Look upon Caesar. What sayest thou to me now? Speak once again. Beware the Ides of March! He is a dreamer. Let us leave him. Pass. your eyes that gentleness and show of love as I want to have. Oh, Cassius, be not deceived. If I have veiled my luck, I turn the trouble of my countenance merely upon myself. And Brutus, I have much mistook your passion. Tell me, good Brutus, can you see your face? No, Cassius, for the eye sees not itself, but by reflection on some other things. It is just, and it is very much lament. I have heard where many of the best respect in Rome, except immortal Caesar, wished that noble Brutus had his eyes. A general shout? I do believe the people choose Caesar for their king. Aye, if you fear it, then must I think that you would not have it so? I would not, Cassius. Yet I love him well. I love the name of honor more than I fear death. I know that virtue to be in you, Brutus, just as well as I know your outward favor. Well, honor is the subject of my story. I was born free as seed. So were you. We both have fed just as well, and we can both endure the winter's cold as well as he. Another general shout? I believe that these applauses are for some new honors that are heaped on Caesar. Men at some times of are masters of their fate. The fault is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings, Brutus and Caesar. What is in that Caesar? Why should his name be sounded any more than yours? What you have worked me to, I have some aim. What you have said, I will consider. 
Till then, my noble friend, chew upon this. Ru Brutus had rather be a villager than to repute himself a son of Rome under these hard conditions. I am glad that my weak words have struck but thus much fire from Brutus. Well, there was a crown offered to Caesar, and being offered to him, he refused it with the back of his hand, and the people then shouted. We heard three shouts. What were they for? Well, three times Caesar was offered the crown, and each time he refused it gentler than the other, and each time the people shouted louder. Who offered him the crown? Why, Senator Anthony. Senator Casca, do you believe this was a political stunt intended to see if Rome is ready to return to a monarchy? As far as I know, Rome is and always will be a republic. Now, if you excuse me. <laughs> Who's that? A Roman. Casca, by your voice. You're as good. Cassius, what night is this? A very pleasing night to honest men. I, whoever knew the heavens better so. For my part, I have walked the streets and bared my bosom to thy thunderstone. But wherefore do you so much tempt the heavens? Now could I cast a name to be a man most like this dreadful night. A man that thunders, lightens, open graves, and roars as doth the lion in the county. A man no mightier than thyself or me. Tis Caesar, you mean. Do you not, Cassius? Let it be who it is. Indeed, they say the senators follow me to establish Caesar as king. Then <coughs> I know I will wear this dagger then. Cassius, from bondage will deliver Cassius. So can I. So every bondman in his own right has the power to cancel his captivity. But so oh, grief, where hast thou led me? Perhaps I shall speak to a willing bondman. Speak to Casco, and I will set this one of mine as far as he who goes farthest. There's a bargain made. Now you know, Casca, I have moved the minds of some of the noblest Romans to undergo with me an enterprise of honor, dangerous consequence. Stand close a while. Here comes one in haste. Tis Senna. I know him by his gate. He is a friend. Senna, what haste you so? To find you. Who is that? Metellus Simmer? No, it is Casca. One in corporate to our attempts. Oh, but Cassius, if you could but win the noble Brutus Be one you content, good Senna. Take this paper. And look you led where Brutus may find it. Throw this in as window, and spray this upon old Brutus's statue. Then repair to the theater. Come, Casca. You and I will yet ear day see Brutus at his house. Three fourths of him is ours already, and the man entire yields him upon our next encounter. Oh, he sits high in old people's hearts. Sure, it was not there when I went to bed. Is not tomorrow the item March? Uh, I know not, sir. Look in the calendar and bring me word. I will, sir. Brutus, thou sleepest awake and see thyself. Shall Rome stand under one man's awe? My ancestors did from the streets of Rome the Tarquin drive when he was called a king. Speak, strike, redress. When Cassius first did wet me against Caesar, I have not slept. Sir, your brother at the door, your brother Cassius at the door, who does desire to see you. Is he alone? No, there are more with him. Do you know that? No, their hats are plugged about their ears, and half their face are 
buried in the clocks that by no means I can discover by any mark of favor. Let them enter. Good morning, Brutus. Do we trouble you? I have been up this hour, awake all night. Know I these men that come along with you? Yes, every man of them. And no one here but honors you. And every one of them wishes that you had that opinion of yourself that every noble Roman bears of you. The conspirators, or liberators, depending on how you look at it, consisted of Brutus and Cassius, who supported Pompey in the great civil war. The others were considered friends and supporters of Caesar. There was Cinna, brother to Cornelia, who was Caesar's first wife. Trebonius, a key commander in Caesar's war with Gaul, who was later made governor of Asia by Caesar. Metellus Cimber, fellow soldier to Caesar, now governor of the rich province of Turkey. Decius, one of Caesar's top three generals, and now the governor of Gaul. And finally, there was Casca, elected to the people's tribune, along with Caesar, who was very popular. They're all welcome. Give me your hands all over, one by one. Shall no man else be touched but only Caesar? I think it is not meet that Mark Antony, so well beloved of Caesar, should outlip Caesar. Antony and Caesar fall together. We shall be called perjurers, not murderers, Caius. And for Mark Antony, think not of him. For he can do no more than Caesar's arm when Caesar's head is off. Yet I fear him for the engrafted love he bears to Caesar. Alas, good Cassius, think not of him. For he is given to sports, to wildness, and much company. There is no fear in him. Let him not die, for he will live and laugh at this hereafter. Yet it is uncertain whether Caesar will come forth today or no. For he is superstitious grown of late. Never fear that. If he be so resolved, I can persuade him. For I can give his humor the true bent, and I will bring him to the capital. The morning comes upon us. We'll leave you, Brutus. Friends, disperse yourselves, and remember what you have said. Show yourselves true romance. Good gentlemen, look fresh and merrily. Let not our looks put on our purposes, but bear it as our Roman actors do, with entire spirits and formal constancy. So, good morrow to you, everyone. Help, ho, ho, they murder Caesar. Who's within? Ah, uh, what say the priests? They will not have you to stir forth today. Plucking the entrails of the sacrificed lamb, they could not find the heart within the beast. Mark Anthony shall say I'm not well, and for thy humor, I will stay at home. And here is Decius Brutus, he shall tell them so. Caesar, all hail. Good morrow, worthy Caesar. I come to fetch you to the Senate House. And you come in a very happy time to bear my greetings to the Senators and tell them I will not come. Cannot is false. I dare not falser. Tell them so, Decius. Most mighty Caesar, let me know some cause, lest I be laughed at when I tell them so. The cause is in my will. I will not come. That is enough to satisfy the Senate. The Senate has concluded to give this day a crown to mighty Caesar. If you shall send them word that you will not come, their minds may change. Very well, then. Get me my things, for I will go. Caesar. 
Beware of Brutus. Take heed of Cassius. Come not near Casca. Have an eye to see him. Trust not Carbonius. Mark well Metellus Simber. Decius Brutus of Sina. Thou hast wronged Cassius the Garius. There is but one mind of all these men, and it is spent against Caesar. But though that's not immoral, look about you. Security gives place to conspiracy. The mighty gods have been a thief. If thou with this, O oh Caesar, thou mayst live. If not, the baseless traitors to Chris High. Yeah, it's a much I come. I Caesar, but not gone. Hey, up, Caesar! Read this! Trebonius doth desire you to read at your best leisure this, his humble suit. Oh, Caesar! Read mine first, for mine that touches Caesar near. Read it! Great Caesar, what touches us, our son, shall last be served. Delay not, Caesar! Read it instantly. What? Is this fellow mad? Caesar! Caesar! I wish your enterprise today may thrive. What enterprise, Popilius? Very you well. What's that, Popilius? He wishes today our enterprise may thrive. I fear our purpose is discovered. Look how he makes this. Mark him, Cassius. Popilius Lena speaks not of our purposes. For look, he smiles, and Caesar doth not change. And look at you, Brutus. Trebonius knows his time, for he draws Mark Antony out of the way. Where is Metellus Simber? Let him go, and presently prefer his suit to Caesar. He is addressed. Press near and second hand. Casca, you are the first that raised your hand. Are we all ready? What is now amiss that senior has said it? Must redress. Is there no voice more worthy than my own to sound more sweetly in great Caesar's ear for the repelling of my banished brother? Et tu, Brute? Liberty! Freedom! Tyranny is dead! Run hence! Proclaim! Cry it about the streets! Run some to the common pulpits and cry out liberty! Freedom and enfranchisement! People and senators, be not affrighted. Ambition's debt is paid. Go to the pulpit, Brutus! Where is Mark Antony? Fled to his house, amazed. Men, wife, children stare, cry it as it were he Stoop, Roman, stoop, and let us bathe our hands in Caesar's blood. Up to the elbows and Vesmina our swords. Then walk we forth to the marketplace. Let's all cry peace, freedom, and liberty. Stoop then and wash. How many ages hence shall our lofty scene be acted out in states unborn in accents yet unknown? Soft, who comes here? Welcome, Mark Antony. Oh, mighty Caesar, dost thou lie so low? Are all thy conquests, glories, triumphs, spoils, shrunk to this little measure? Fare thee well. I know not, gentlemen. What do you intend? Who else must be led blood? Who else is rank? If I myself, I do beseech you, if you bear me hard now, whilst your purple tents do reek and smoke, fulfill your pleasure. Antony, beg not your death of us. Though now we must appear bloody and cruel, our hearts you see not. For your part, we do receive you in with all kind love 
good thoughts and reverence. Your voice shall be as strong as any man's in the disposing of new dignities. I doubt not of your wisdom, gentlemen, no. <laughs> Alas, what shall I say? You must conceit me, either a coward or a flatterer, that I did last this season. Oh, tis true. Mark Antony, I blame you not for praising Caesar, but what compact mean you to have with us? Friends, I'm with you all and love you all. My produce is body to the marketplace and in the pulpit, as becomes a friend, speaking the order of his funeral. You shall, Mark Antony. Brutus, a word with you? Know not what you do. Do not consent that Antony speak at his funeral. Know you how much the people may be moved by that which he will utter. Antony, here, take you Caesar's body. You may not in your funeral speech blame us, but speak all good you can devise of Caesar. And you say you do it by our permission. And you shall speak in the same pulpit whereto I am going, after my speech is ended. Be so. I do desire no more. Prepare the body then, and follow us. Oh, pardon me, the bleeding peace of earth, that I am meek and gentle with these butchers. Thou art the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times. Woe to me hand that shed this costly blood. You serve Octavius Caesar. Do you not? I do, Mark Antony. Caesar did right for him to come to Rome. He did receive his letters, and is coming. It bid me say to you by word of mouth, Oh, Caesar! Post back with speed then, and tell him what hath chanced. Here is a morning Rome, a dangerous Rome. No Rome of safety for Octavius yet. From Rome, the flash apparently official. Julius Caesar died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Some 38 minutes ago on the Ides of March. We want Caesar! 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 I will hear you want Caesar! The noble Brutus is a sentence! Silence! Romans, countrymen, and brothers, hear me for my cause and be silent that you may hear. If there be any in this assembly, any dear friend of Caesar's, to him I say that Brutus's love was no less than his. If then the friend demands why Brutus rose against Caesar, this is my answer. Not that I love Caesar less, but I love Rome more. Yeah! Had you rather that Caesar were living to die all slaves than that Caesar were dead to live all free men? Oh, yeah. Yeah. As he, Caesar, loved me, I weep for him. As he was fortunate, I rejoice at it. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. Yeah! Who is here so rude that would not be a Roman? If any, speak, for him have I offended. Who is here so vile that would not love his country? If any, speak, for him have I offended. I pause for a reply. None, 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 none. Then none have I offended. 
I have done no more to Caesar than you shall do to Brutus. I my best friend for the good of Rome. And I have the same dagger for myself when it shall please my country to need my death. Let Brutus live! Let Brutus live! Let Brutus live! Why me Caesar? Caesar? Caesar's better part shall be crowned in Brutus. My countrymen, let me depart alone. And for my sake, stay here with Antony. Do grace his speech tending to Caesar's glories, which Mark Antony is allowed to make by our permission. I entreat you, not a man depart, save I alone, till Caesar, till Antony have spoke. Friends, Romans, country, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do live after them, the good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus had told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault, and grievously had Caesar answered it. For Brutus is an honorable man, so are they all, all honorable men. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious, <coughs> and Brutus is an honorable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome, which ransoms did the general coffers feel. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When the poor hath cried, Caesar hath what? Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refused. What's this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure, Brutus is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did nothing once, not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? My heart is in a coffin there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. Uh, he thinks there's much reason in his sayings. If thou consider the rightly manner, Caesar had had great wrong. I fear there will be a worse come to his place. Caesar will not take the crown. Therefore, tis certain he was not ambitious. Here is a parchment with the seal of Caesar. I found it in his closet. Tis his will. Let but the commons hear this testament. <laughs> Read the will here, Mark Anthony. The will, the will, hear Caesar's will. The will, the will, damn you. It will make you mad. Tis good you know not that you are his heirs. The will, the will, we For if you should, oh, what would come of it? The will. The will, the will, hear Caesar's will. You compel me then to read the will? Then make a corpse, then make a ring about the corpse of Caesar. Good friends, sweet friends, let me not stir you up to such a sudden flood of mutiny. They that have done this deed, 
are honorable. <coughs> what private griefs they have, alas, I know not, that made them do it. They are wise and honorable. Well, burn the house of Brutus. Come, seek the conspirators. Yet hear me, countrymen. Yet hear me speak. Pierce Noel under Caesar's seal. To every Roman citizen, he gives 75 drachmas. Oh. 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 He hath left them you all his works, his private arbors and new planted archers. On this side, Hyper, he hath left them you and your heirs forever. Common pleasures to walk aboard and recreate yourselves. Here was a Caesar. When comes such another? <coughs> Go fetch fire! Go, Go fetch fire! fire. Now, let it work, mischief. Thou art a fool. Take thou what course thou wilt. What is your name? Whither are you going? Where do you dwell? Are you a married man or a bachelor? The matter is answered directly. I'm a bachelor. That is what to say. There are fools that I marry. You buried a bank for that. Proceed directly. Directly. I'm going to Caesar's funeral. As a friend or an enemy? As a friend. For your dwelling, briefly. Briefly. I dwell by the capital. Your name, sir. Really. Cinna. My name is Cinna. Tear to pieces! He's a conspirator! My name, I'm Sinna the Poet! I'm Sinna the Poet! Tear for his bad verses! Tear for his bad verses! <laughs> I'm not Sinna the Conspirator! Riots rock Rome. Roused by the funeral speech of Mark Antony, violence in the streets of Rome has broken out as supporters of the late Caesar seek satisfaction. Several deaths have been reported, widespread looting, and it is said that several of the conspirators, including Brutus and Cassius, have fled the capital. Civil war once again erupted. Cassius and Brutus raised armies and met in Syria. They decided to march on Philippi, where Octavius and Antony's armies awaited them after having decimated Decius's legions in Gaul. This was to be the decisive battle to determine who would control the military might of Rome. They stand, and would have parlay. Words before blows, is it so, countrymen? Not that we love words better, as you do. Good words are better than bad strokes, Octavius. In your bad strokes, Brutus, you give good words. Witness in a hole you made in Caesar's heart, crying long live hell, Caesar. Antony. Your words, they rub the bees and leave them a honeyless, not stingless too. Oh yes, and soundless too, for you have sown their buzzing, and very wisely threat before you sting. Villains, you did not so. When you vile daggers hat one another in the side of Caesar, you showed your teeth like apes, and frown like hounds, and bow like boatmen, kissing Caesar's feet. While stamped Casca, like a cur, behind struck Caesar on the neck. Oh, you flatterer! Flatterer! Come, come, the cause. I draw a sword against conspirators. And when do you think that sword comes up? Never. 
till Caesar's three and thirty wounds be well avenged, or until another Caesar hath added slaughter to the sword of traitors. Caesar, thou canst not die by traitors' hands, unless bringest thou with thee. So I hope. I was not born to die on Brutus's sword. If thou wert the noblest of thy strain, then couldst not die more honorable. A peevish schoolboy, worthless of such honor, joined it with a masker and a reveler. Old kiss of steel. Come, Antony, away. Defiance, traitors, we hurl in your teeth. If you, come, if you dare to fight today, come to the field. If not, when you have stomach. Nay, if we lose this battle, you are contented to be led in triumph through the streets of Rome? No, Cassius, no. Think not that ever Brutus will go bound to Rome. Farewell, Brutus. If we do meet again, we'll smile indeed. If not, this parting was well made. That a man might know the end of this day's business. Eric Tom. Marcella! Ride, ride, Marcella, ride! And give these bills unto the legions on the other side. Let them set on at once. For I perceive the cold demeanor in Octavius's wing. And son of Push, give them the overthrow! Ride, ride, Marcella, ride! Let them all come down! Look! Titanius, look! The villains fly! Oh, Cassius, Brutus gave the word too early! Who, having some advantages over Octavius, took it too eagerly! Our soldiers well fell to spoil. Whilst we, by Anthony, are all enclosed. Fly further off, my lord! Fly further off! Mark Anthony is in your tents, my lord! Fly therefore, noble Cassius! Fly further off! Titanius! Get thee up to yonder troops and here again, that I may rest assured whether yon troops are friend or enemy. I will be back, even with thought. Pindarus, get higher up on the hill. My sight was ever thick. Regard Titinius and tell me what thou noticed about the field. Oh my lord, what, what news? He is enclosed round about with horsemen, yet he spurs on. Now Titinius. Now some light. He likes to. He's taken. Hey! Hey! Come down. Behold no more. Come hither. Now, be a free man. And with this good sword that ran through Caesar's mouths, search this bosom, guide thou sword. Oh. Caesar, thou art revenged, even with the sword that killed thee. Ah, but it was false intelligence, for Pindarus did not see that Titinius had actually survived the assault and had indeed pushed Antony's forces back. Yet Cassius's death would prove to be the decisive turning point in the battle. These times were tough, Cassius. Is that not he? The lights upon the ground? He lies not like the living. Oh, my heart! Is, is that not he? No, that was he, Masala. The sun of Rome is set. Our days is gone. Hit up! Where, Masala, thought this body lie? Go yonder. He mourned it 
too. Titanius' face is upward. He is slain. Oh, Caesar, thou art mighty yet. Reports that Cassius, commander of the rebellion forces, has been killed, along with several of his commanders, leaving the rebel forces in disarray. Unconfirmed rumors of Brutus's eventual collapse are widespread. Oh, countrymen! Oh, yeah! Hold up your hands! What bastard doth not? Who will go with me? I replicate my name! I'm the son of Marcus Cato! I know you died for my country's friend! And I am Brutus! Marcus Brutus! I, Brutus, my country's friend! Know me for Brutus! Room ho! Tell Anthony! Brutus is taken! Brutus is taken! Brutus is taken! My lord! Where is he? Safe, Antio. Brutus is safe enough. I dare surely that no enemy shall ever take alive the noble Brutus. This is not Brutus, my friend. But I assure you, a prize no less in worth. Keep this man safe. Give him all kindness. I had rather have such men, my friends, than enemies. <laughs> Come, poor remains of friends, rest on this rock. Tilius showed the torchlight, though he is not found. He is taken or slain. Peace then, no words. Come hither, Volumius. What says my lord? The ghost of Caesar hath appeared to me this last night here in Philippic fields. I'm afraid my hour is come. Not so, my lord. Nay, I am sure it is. How cease the world? And how it goes, our enemies beat us to the pit. Hold thou my sword hilts, whilst I run on it. That's not an office for a friend, my lord. Fly, fly, my lord. There is no tarrying here. Farewell to you, to you and you, Volumnius. For Brutus's tongue hath almost ended his life's history. Fly, my lord, fly! Hence, I will follow. And for thee, Shredo, stay by thy lord. Hold thine, my sword. Turn away thy face, whilst I do run on it. Will thou, Shredo? Fare you on, my lord. Farewell, good Shredo. Caesar, now be still. I kill not thee with half so good a will. What man is that? My master's man. Shadow, where is thy master? So Brutus should be found. All who serve Brutus, I shall entertain them. Fellow, wilt thou bestow thy time with me? How dies my master, Shadow? I held the sword, and he did run on it. This was the noblest Roman of them all. All the conspirators save only he did, that they did in envy of great Caesar. 
He only, in a general honest thought and common good to all, make one of them. In my tents his bones tonight shall lie, most like a soldier, ordered honorably. And now, let's away to part the glories of this joyous day!